and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Fort Mosby National High School, Peter Numoy, Beverly Kamuka, Koisen Sabuin, and Dinoke Gonapa. I just noticed uh, Dinoke may have another relative that was challenging in the other school, is that correct? Yes, so it's good to see a brother and a sister participating in the debate. Wonderful. Give her a big hand. And from the opposing side, Kupiano Secondary, please make welcome Kamate Rapila, <laughs> Verli Vauna, Donna Raka, Maranatha Kila. As good sportsmen, please may you meet your opponent and take your seat. Their topic of debate is the Mining Act should be reviewed for maximum benefit of landowners. The Mining Act should be reviewed for maximum benefit of landowners. Is there a problem in our Mining Act? Or are there problems that we are experiencing uh, with, with the uh, local landowners or the provinces that have mines in their provinces? We have Western Province. Now we have the Ram Ramonical Cobalt Mine. I think that's a really, really big one. So that's the topic of discussion. The Mining Act should be reviewed for maximum benefits. And the affirmative team from Fort Mosby National High School, their first speaker, please make welcome Peter Numoy. Good luck to you, Peter. Good afternoon, students. Chairperson, fellow debaters, judicators, timekeeper, and the wonderful viewers throughout Port Mosby. We are the affirmative team of Port Mosby National High. We're going for the topic in debate. The Mining Act should be reviewed for the maximum benefit of the landowners. I'm the first speaker. I'll be, go, I'll be defining and explaining, while our second speaker will be speaking on the economical perspective. Our third speaker will be basing his perspectives on the socio-cultural, and our third, fourth, and final speaker will summarize and conclude our debate. Now, there are four terms, term, terms used inside the debate, which is the Mining Act, Review, Landowners, and Maximum Benefit. Now, the Mining Act is a federal law that authorizes and governs prospecting and mining for economic minerals on the federal lands. Reviewed a new examination, examination of something with the possibility or intention of changing it if, it this, if this is considered desirable or necessary. Landowners, a person who owns a land or a large area of land. My minimum benefits are the greatest gain from something that one gets. Hence, our overall definition for the above topic is the federal law that states that all minerals and resources existing on, in, and under the land or sea anywhere belonging to the state, belongs to the state, should be re-examined and changed for the greatest gain of the person or clan who owns the particular land. Therefore, our case, the Mining Act is not a favor of the land owner, not in favor of the land owners. Therefore, it should be reviewed. The Mining Act 1992 is the main piece of legislation that governs mining act in activity in PNG. According to the Independent State of Papua New Guinea Mining Act 1992 and Regulation Section 5, all minerals existing on, in, or below the surface of any land in Papua New Guinea, including any minerals contained in any water, lying on any land in Papua New Guinea are the property of the state and that all licenses for leases subject of mining areas are made to follow the Mining Act. The unfortunate reality of the Mining Act is that instead of the Mining Act protecting the maximum benefits of the landowners, it is used for the government to protect these foreign mining companies and sharing the profits obtained from the, from the land belonging to the landowners amongst themselves while denying those benefits that belong rightfully to the landowners. Now, intellectual students, 
sitting here in this hall. You think that's fair? Obviously that isn't fair. If the government, instead of protecting its people, the landowners is using their resources for their personal gain and the mining which belongs to foreign companies in our own land. Now the maximum benefit is used. What is it? When saying so, it isn't just all about the benefits or the special support grants. And definitely it isn't about some of the infrastructure provided. It is mainly more about these landowners knowing what they are getting themselves into since most of them are illiterate and can be easily played like toys by foreign professionals, businessmen exploiting our country. Now there is a certain legal document known as the MOA, Memorandum of Agreement. It is used as a blanketing tool to cover the mining act so that the governments may go on and exploit the lands that doesn't belong to them but to the landowners, therefore helping the foreign companies to rip us off the landowners' properties, their birthrights. Now, before I'd like to go and sit down, I'd like to restate our case We, the affirmative team, truly and strongly believe firmly that the Mining Act should be reviewed for the maximum benefit of the landowners. Thank you. We want to see more arguments, so let's hear from the opposition side Kamata Rapila from Team Kupiano Secondary, who don't want the Mining Act to be reviewed for the maximum benefit of landowners. Thank you, the chairperson, the adjudicators, and the wonderful audience in this auditorium. As the topic stands, the Mining Act should be reviewed for, benefit, for maximum benefits of landowners. We, the constructive opposition, will be coming up with reasons as to why we think the Mining Act should not be reviewed for maximum benefits of landowners. But before going any further, I would like to introduce my team. As you all can see, I'm the first speaker of the opposition team, and I would be talking on the social aspects. My second speaker, who will be elaborating more on the economic aspect of it, followed by our third speaker, who will be elaborating more on the political aspect, and for finally, fourth speaker, who will be summarizing. First of all, I would like to rebut on what the first speaker of the government said, the affirmative team, sorry. He mentioned something about the Mining Act used for government to protect its foreign companies and also on the MOA. The MOA means, simply, it clearly states, it clearly means the memorandum of agreement. The memorandum of agreement, the agreement is not an agreement unless it is, it, they come to agreement which includes three people, which is the mining companies, the government, and the landowners. Now back to my points, the social aspect. We, the opposition, think that the Mining Act should not be reviewed for maximum benefit of landowners as to why, because as according to the LBS, which means the landowners benefit streams, on page three it says that the develop the education, education is one of the benefits that the mining companies and the government will bring across to the landowners and this will increase the skills and knowledge of landowners. And within that, the government and the mining companies are required to come up with the, the education policy, which is a scholarship of the landowners in that mining area, the children of the landowners in that mining area. Therefore, their future is secured by the government and the mining companies. Reco uh, relocation packages, which means that if the mining companies want to come in to construct the mine, they need to relocate the village with the, which the pipeline goes down to that village in order for the environment for, to not be affected. For, I'll give you a clear example. The Octeri mine. 
which was built up on, the, on Mount Babylon. And before they did this, they had to relocate the village into Upper Tabubil. And within that, while, when relocating the village, they provided them with housing, electricity, water supplies, and etc. So that in order for them to come and construct a mine, these people would not be affected. Community development. Each operating mines in PNG are required to have community relation offices to assist the communities in the, in the mine affected areas. And that, those benefits include health services, um, water supply, health programs, women and youth programs, and et cetera, you name it, in order for these people to come up to issue, to come up with issues that are affecting that mining area in consultation and cooperation. And may I ask this, why do we want to give the landowners a maximum, a maximum, the maximum benefits when they have enough? If we're doing that, then the government really has to reconsider this because it is, they have to look at it carefully if they give them maximum benefits to the landowners and spend more, the government itself will the, make a loss in the government. Therefore, we, the constructive opposition, would restate that the Mining Act should not be reviewed for maximum benefits to landowners. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much to uh, Kamata Rapela, the first speaker for the opposing team. Please make welcome the second speaker from the affirmative team, Beverly Kamuka. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, good afternoon, adjudicators, timekeeper, um, the beautiful audience, and my fellow debaters. Before I go go on into presenting my points, I would like to rebut, I would like to rebut on the arguments stated by the negative team. Now, the argument stated that she thinks that the landowners were relocated at the Octedi mine, were provided with services. Now, that is, she doesn't have any proof as she said that she thinks, okay, she has to come with evidence. The Mining Act is not in favor of the landowners, therefore, it should be reviewed. The Mining Act doesn't give landowners the maximum economical benefit. According to the book, My Land, My Resources, benefits, a landowner shared his experience after signing the so-called memorandum of agreement from the Pogera gold mine stated, and I quote, the royalties and equity that I was supposed to receive as promised in the MOA was not satisfied, unquote. This simply means that the maximum economical benefit promised was not entirely fulfilled. Annually, landowners receive 2% of their share in various mining projects. It has been shown that landowners, instead of being paid on monthly basis, are paid on quarterly basis. Now, try get the 2% and multiply by a quarter. What do you get? just 0.5 percent. Is that a maximum benefit? Certainly not. Now to my second point, which is the Mining Act should be re reviewed because it does not give landowners their maximum benefit in terms of infrastructure. According to an article, page 20 of the book, my land, my resources, benefits. A landowner shared his experience saying, and I quote, they, referring to the wealthy foreign miners, were supposed to help us develop after signing the MOA, but we are still living 
in a primitive way. We still live in houses of, of grass and coconut leaves. We still get our light from hurricane lamps. They haven't given us any electricity or permanent houses. They are greedy, selfish people and very tricky, unquote. Similar complaints were also shared by other landowners, as Mr. Poco Legger of Pium PNG, a landowner said, and I quote, first, when the company came, they told us that the company is coming to develop the gold in Pogera. And then they told us that we will be living in high houses. We will be paid so much money. We will get business spin-offs and get us into contact with the mine. We will have plenty of cars. And our kids will be put to schools. So agreeing upon these words and empty promises, we gave our land to the government to develop the mining town. And now the mine is, an, and now the mine is in operation. I have never received and seen any of what promised to me, unquote. Now tell me, does that sound like this landowner got his maximum benefit in terms of infrastructure? Definitely not. You see, the Mining Act actually deal, the Mining Act actually shut the landowners out of the deal, causing them to live in mass and without getting the maximum benefit they should be getting. After all, land is, in PNG, land is our life. Land, land is our life. It is what we depend on. Hence, the Mining Act should be reviewed. As one of the landowners, Mr. Nelson Akiko said in an interview, and I quote, I am trying to renegotiate re the previous agreement that my forefather signed when I was back, back in the village. I believe when we review the act, I think things will change, unquote. Meaning he should be able to get the maximum benefit that he deserves. Therefore, we, the affirmative team, strongly and firmly believes believes upon all strong proof that the Mining Act should be reviewed for the maximum benefit of landowners. Thank you very much, Beverly. Now let's see what the opposition team has to say about that. Please make welcome the second speaker, Veli Vauna. Thank you, the chairperson, the honorable educators, the wonderful audience who are presented here in this auditorial room. I ask the second speaker of the opposition who will be going against the topic that mining act should not be reviewed for the maximum benefit of the landowners. But before that, I would like to rebut on some points the government have bring across. They say that we are still living in the primitive ways. But as you can see, we are not living like we are in a modern society. We, Papua New Guinea has already developed. And it is not the heck that we should be blaming. It is the people we should blame. Okay. Is it the mining heck benefiting the landowners today? Well, is it? Uh, yeah. It's blame. It is benefiting the people today because as you can see when the mining companies come into the particular um, place where they, the mining is going to be take uh, mining, mining is to take place they they bring infrastructure they build new hospitals uh, houses for the landowners there <clears throat> mining mining hack should not be reviewed for the maximum benefit of the for the landowners because if the mining act is reviewed then the maximum benefit will go to the landowners while the government and the developers will say the minimum benefit. That means that the, the developers and the, uh, the government will not get enough. I mean, there will be no equal share between them. That uh, The Papua New Guinea, it will st slow the development of our country. Then the heck, then the develop development will not, then the developers will not end enough benefits of their expense. Like when the developers move into the, into the uh, mining areas to extract the gold out from the 
or the the result resource out from the mine they will bring all sorts of their machinery their resources to use and to extract the the resource underground and uh, they will use a lot of money to do that they will build roads the hospitals and etc but if if the maximum benefit uh, if the maximum benefit uh, the if if the mining act is revealed uh, revealed then i believe the go government and the developers will not get enough benefits okay to to my point royalty the the 2% of the foreign the 2% of the freight on board our annual revenue is then covered according to the agreed percentage break up as per the memorandum of agreement arrangement that is under the development forum which means that the agreement between the three parties the three parties have to come to an agreement the the government the developers and the and the land owners and to my second point it's employment the first priority or preference is given to the land owners secondly to the mine host provinces the the png rest of the world for the casual and permanent employment opportunities as contained as contained in the memorandum of agreement like the there will be a lot of uh, job opportunities for the mining people uh, not the mining people but the land owners the, these developers they will give a lot of job opportunities they will first they they will give the first priorities to the mine the land owners and they will they will employment them in the mine that they are that, that is going to operate land owners are invited to establish companies to participate in the spin of benefits and join join ventures joint ventures with other rep reputable companies to conclude land owners need to use the benefit wisely by educating by being educated the land owners they need to be educated thank you need to be educated huh okay let's see what the affirmative team has to say about that let's call on donna rather koisen saboin from palm national high thank you very much chairperson and good afternoon to you good afternoon adjudicators good afternoon timekeepers participating team good afternoon to the audience once again and not forgetting the viewers of Kundu too. I, as the third speaker of the affirmative team, going for the topic, Mining Act should be reviewed for maximum landowner benefits, would firstly like to make a few rebuttals on what the opposing team have argued. Firstly, according to the state statements done by the opposing team, infrastructure and housing is brought in by the mining companies when they go into a certain area. Well, I don't see infrastructure as graded roads and incomplete or unsealed roads and container houses this is not this is low quality infrastructure and also about the two percent that our second speaker have already stated that this two percent is received by the landowners annually so what we are trying to say is that at least there is a little increase maybe to about 10 20 percent for the landowners to benefit this is reaching maximum benefit for the landowners now to my points According to the Mining Act, Section 164, it states that when there is a conflict between the landowners and the mining companies, or in um, Mining Act terms, the licensee and the holder of the tenement, they must refer this dispute to the director of the resolution. And according to the MiningAidWorld.com uh, mining Act, it states that um, landowners in Ramonico are currently facing 
um, complications with this act, the 100, Section 164 under the Mining Act. They are actually, they are actually 360 um, landowner clans, and they have registered 60 of the disputes to the Special Land Titles Commissioner. Now, this Special Land Titles Commissioner, his job is to critically look into the disputes and analyze and hear to that. But amongst all these years till now or to date, they haven't been heard, not single one. Now the fact is that it takes months for a single dispute to be heard, analyzed, and then you know, resolutions can be brought up. But not one to date, I will repeat, not one to date have been resolved. So I would like to relate that to the act, under the act, the section 160, which states that to pay a compensation, to, or in order for compensation to be payable to the landowners, the dispute must be resolved first by the Special Land Titles Commissioner. But that hasn't been done. So how do you expect the landowners to receive maximum benefit from compensation? <laughs> Secondly, we would like to recommend that the mining, review be, the mining Act be reviewed so that the byproducts are included in the beneficial of the landowners. Because in the Mining Act, the current Mining Act of 1992, there isn't anything stating that the, by, the byproducts of the minerals extracted or mined will be beneficial to the landowners. It's just what, for example, Ramo Nicol, what the company is saying to the landowners is that you'll be receiving benefits from the Nicol. But we as science students, we are social science, we are all students, we are educated, we know that from the extracted minerals, we can extract a lot of other um, byproducts, such as petrol, oil, and other products. So we would like to recommend that the, the, the Mining Act be include these by, byproducts so that the landowners are aware of that and they will benefit maximally from these things. This is the, this is the current issue that has arised in Bougainville uh, years ago. This has caused the unrest in Bougainville because the landowners were left in the dark and ignored of what is being extracted from their own land. Now put yourself into a landowner's shoe. If a mining company comes up to you and say, you sign this agreement, we give you this, this and that, without telling you that once you put your signature on the paper, the land is for the state. Everything you live on, whatever is underneath or on top of it is for the state. I would certainly not give my land, no matter what, no matter the amount. So what we the affirmative stream are trying to say is that the current mining act is not in favor of the landowners. So it must be reviewed so that landowners can receive maximum benefits from it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Khoisan Sabuin, for your presentation. The third speaker from the affirmative team, Port Mosby National High School. Please make welcome from the opposing team, Team Kupiano Secondary, Donna Rocca. Thank you, the honorable adjudicators, the chairperson, and the audience. Before I touch, on, on the point which is on political aspect, I would like to rebut some point that was raised by the third speaker, second speaker of the, third speaker of the government, beg pardon. He said something about complicated within the landowners. That complicated which shows that landowners are not educated enough to understand the law. To my points, the number two point, in order to the develop, to come into the operation, there has to be an agreement between the landowners and the developers. However, within the reach, reaching of this agreement, which is known as MOA, Memorandum of Agreement, in order to reach this law, the government makes sure that it involves in the de develop of this law or agreement. This agreement stated, it states how much it's going to be break up in terms of the percentage that will share among the government, the developer, and the landowners. The 
The second point is through the develop, the mining develop uh, developers that going in and operate in the, 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 the lands of the landowners, it brings revenue to the national government. The government receives the revenue through CIT, Corporate Income Tax, which is which it then pays 30% to the resident companies and 40% to the non-resident companies. Resident companies is talking about companies that are registered and they are the indigenous, especially from Papua New Guinea. And the non-resident companies are companies which are coming in from other countries as known as foreign investors. The government receives the tax through some areas. It, re it gets its tax or income through tax from interest withholding tax and dividend withholding tax as well as salaries and wages from these developers. Their tax from the developer are then used by the government to fulfill its budgetary obligation. Let me repeat, to fulfill its budgetary obligations in order to benefit its people, including the landowners. That benefits, it comes in a form of services. That service such as infrastructure services, uh, infrastructure development, such as schools, health, and roads. Those are tangible, and it is a reality that I am talking about today. In terms of the business perspective, the government has assistance to the landowners' companies in terms of seed capital to establish in terms of, from the seed capital grants, the government give finance support, finance, financial assistance to the landowners and business establishment grants in order to establish their own, their own businesses in their local areas. Therefore, we, the strong and constructive opposition, would like to state that the mining Mining Act should not be reviewed for the maximum benefit of landowners because the benefit is already there, but it is the landowners who misuse these benefits in unusual manner. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. When he gets his uh, tradesman, he'll be working in the mine. Or when he gets his degree, he'll be a mining engineer. Please give him a big hand. Donna Rucker. And we wish him all the best in his future career. Okay. Now we're going to uh, listen to the final speaker from the affirmative team. And the final speaker will have 10 minutes to, uh, uh, to, to debate the topic. And the topic is the Mining Act should be reviewed for maximum benefit of landowners. Please make welcome... Ms. Dinoke Gonapa. Thank you, uh, Master Ceremony. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, judges, timekeepers, uh, fellow students, and teachers, as well as the participating teams. Uh, before I go on with my points, uh, I would like to make a few rebuttals. Firstly, um, one may argue that one may argue that um, when you uh, when the uh, mining act is reviewed, uh, it will bring um, the government will make a loss if the mining act is reviewed. However, let's face the reality: who does the land what who does the land belong to? 
It belongs to the people, right? It does not belong to the state. So it, it's not about the land making a profit or making, it's not about the state making a profit or making business out of the land that is owned by the people. It's about the landowners who will benefit from the land. Okay, the other statement, and I quote, they will bring lots of money. They will bring lots of money. However, when we talk about maximum benefits, we're not only talking about money. We're talking about the loss of culture, social disorder. We're talking about the environmental pollution and everything. You talk about money, that's not maximum benefit. <laughs> Moving on to my point. Um, the topic in motion, the Mining Act, the Mining Act should be reviewed for the maximum benefit of the landowners. Our overall definition, the federal law that states that all minerals and resources existing on, in, and under the land or the sea belongs to the state should be reviewed or, I mean, should be re-examined for the greatest gain of the person or clan who owns the land. The Mining Act 1992 is the main piece of legislation that governs mining in Papua New Guinea. And under Section 5 of the Mining Act, it is stated, and I quote, all minerals existing on, in, or below the surface of any land in PNG, including any minerals contained in any water lying on any land in Papua New Guinea, are the property of the state. Ladies and gentlemen, how on earth do you think the landowners came to an agreement, agreement with this act when the act, when the act states that all resources and minerals will no longer be theirs but the states? Well, the answer is simple. Look at Papua New Guinea. About more than three quarters of the population live in the rural areas and they are the landowners, approximately 80 to 85 percent of the total population. Now, with these people, these people do not have much exposure to education, or if not, not even one, not, not even, um, not even, they're not even educated. So how do you think they would be un un able to understand the Mining Act as it is? Instead, they are given, instead they are given the MOA, which actually give these people poor and empty promises. Well, when we're talking about maximum benefit, we do not necessarily mean economical benefit, which is currently a very low 2% equity per year. But we, are, but we are talking about benefit which actually includes social, cultural, and environmental benefits. Instead, under the MOA, on very clean sheets of papers are written empty, foregone, promises which never usually benefit the landowners. As stated and extracted from an article titled Overview of the Mining, Lahir landowners and New Ireland provincial government were led by were led by a a Papua New Guinea-based company to believe that they would obtain foregone mining benefits when the MOA of 1995 had been reviewed and replaced. Ladies and gentlemen, economically speaking, 2%, 2% equity. Is that maximum benefit? Well, that's all our landowners get, 2% equity. What about the 99% of the total they extract from our resources? Where does it go to? when? When, the, when Papua New Guinea is not even developing and our economy is not even moving forward, but rather backwards. We have six mines that are currently operating, three mines that have ceased, ceased operations. However, still Papua New Guinea, we may, be, we may say that we are rich in natural resources, but what's happening to the 99 and 98% that goes to the government?
when we talk about infrastructure development, we don't mean that we don't mean infrastructure developments that will last for only five to ten years. We mean infrastructure development that will last the people a lifetime. Let's take, for example, you look at the house or the colony of ants. When you go in and when you break out the colony or their house or where they um, usually, usually get their food and everything supply from, it's actually open and these ants, they, they start to rush out and they leave this place barren. That's exactly what the mine does to the land. When, once the land is, when, once everything, all the resources is extracted, what are we left with? Nothing. According to HHP.com, under extracted from, from the, extracted from a type, uh, article titled, Overview of the Mining in Papua New Guinea. And I quote, since the introduction of mines, there has been a range of problems which includes loss of nat native title and displacement from traditional land, loss of food and water resources due to pollution, violence, and other forms of social disruption. Is 2% equity enough to compensate for all this loss? In the Ramu Nickel mine, the government, the government decided deceived the landowners into forming association, landowner groups, which will represent the rest of the rest of the landowners when they benefit. However, this has never been the case. According to the um, Mining Act, Section 160, under compensation in the case of land dispute, it states, land dispute should be resolved and thereafter such compensation shall be paid. However, according to the Mine Watch, Ramu Nickel has never reached a consentment. This has resulted in unrest, which is exactly the case that had occurred in the North Solomon Islands province. So people of this great nation, are you sick and tired of these empty promises? Well, at least we do have some prominent leaders who are now standing up for the rights of the people. According to the Pacific Islands report extracted from the PNG Post Korea June 1, 2009, former Prime Minister and New Island Governor Sir Julius Chen introduced a motion in Parliament seeking comprehensive seeking comprehensive Re review of the Mining Act 1992 to transfer all natural resources ownership from state to the la landowners, stating, and I quote, we must shift the wealth of the nation to the hands of the individual, the resource owners. The wealth of our nation must be in the hands of our people. This truly then is the pinnacle of democracy, of what democracy defines, the people's government, unquote. He also further stated, and I quote, the government should protect the people. Instead, it has been protecting the foreign mining companies and sharing their profits while denying those benefits to the people, unquote. So as future elites, let's take a stand for our people. We would like, a, we would like to make just one recommendation. And based on our, based on our case, Based on our case, the Mining Act is not in favor of the landowners. And our, our recommendation would be that the Mining Act should be reviewed so that it would be in favor of the landowners so that they get a maximum benefit. Therefore, we the, we the affirmative team strongly and truly believe that the Mining Act should be reviewed for the maximum benefit of the people, uh, landowners. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Ms. Gunapa, for your presentation. That's the final speaker from the affirmative team, Port Moresby National High School, who are uh, supporting the topic, the Mining Act should be reviewed for maximum benefit of landowners. You are landowners too as well? Yeah, good on you. Okay, for landowners, let's see what the uh, opposition uh, team has to say about the topic. The final speaker from Kupiando Secondary, Maranatha Kila. Uh, thank you, the chairperson, the honorable adjudicators, the timekeeper, 
my fellow debaters and a wonderful audience. Uh, as the last and final speaker of the negative team, I'll be summarizing what my three speakers have presented. And also in my summary, I will do in the rebuttals. The Mining Act should not be reviewed for maximum benefits of landowners because all mining investments, projects in PNG bring benefits to landowners both directly and indirectly as stated by the first speaker. <laughs> According to the Landowner Benefit Streams Information Leaflets, landowner from mining project area talks about the direct and indirect benefits like education and training, community development, royalties, and so forth. As the first speaker talked about a social aspect, I will be summarizing. Education and training. When you go to a particular mine, there's always education and training that will be provided. So the landowners have to be educated on how to use the benefits wisely. It also brings community development infrastructures closer to their doors. The mining act was changed in 1992, as already been mentioned, to suit the requirements of the landowners. And it's not even 20 years and we want to review that Mining Act. Leave the Act, educate the people. <clears throat> in reality, mining towns are more developed than the other parts in the nation. So what more are we looking for if we give some more benefits to the landowners. What other benefits do you think they would want to make? Because there are already infrastructures like schools, hospitals, roads, and everything. And what else do you want the landowners to benefit? Is that not enough? Each operation mines in PNG are required to have community relations office to assist the communities in the mine affected areas. Community development benefits such as water supply and health, sports, agriculture, and literacy programs, which are aimed at improving the standard living of people. The agreement set out the different types of benefits that will be made available to the landowners according to the, according to the Mineral Act in 1992. The benefit streams provide opportunities for the landowners and the mine host, provincial governments to fully participate and derive the financial and socio-economic benefits. The landowners benefit through the government services and infrastructure developments. It is by the law that the developer pays 2% of the freight on board annual revenues of the mine product to the state as the owner of a mineral. However, the state does not get any of the royalty. Out of the 2%, when it is converted to the 100%, 20% is given to the landowners as direct cash, while the other 80% is in infrastructures and government services. In employment-wise, when you go to a mine, opportunities or preference is given first to the landowners than to the other provinces. <laughs> Therefore, the Mining Act should not be reviewed for maximum benefits of landowners because landowners have agreed on the payment as stated on the memorandum of agreement and also in the benefits. The three levels, the government, the developer, and the landowners, they have agreed. The landowner have agreed to get the amount that has been agreed on in that meeting. So why is the landowner complaining that it is not enough? <laughs> the landowners, because we are, we are talking about the landowners not benefiting, it is up to the landowner to you know, prioritize the money or the benefits that are coming in. He needs to be educated. That is why the mining companies are going to be in development in that area, like education and training, as stated before. Remember, landowners only, they own only one meter below the surface. 
and below that one meter, it, own, it is owned by the state. In the Mining Act 1992, under Part 7, page 7, indicates compensation to landowners. When the, when the, landown, uh, when the company goes in, like landowners complain that oh, it's going to spoil the area and damage of environment and so forth. But in the Mining Act, and there are principles of compensation. No entry until compensation agreed or determined compensation agreements, determination of comp compensation by a warden, appeal from a warden's de determination, compensation to be binding, and compensation in the case of a land dispute. So there are already facts, acts that are to be taken place if something happens to the land. By law, compensation is paid to the affected landowners for the entry and occupation of the land for loss or damage suffered or forcing to be suffered by a mining activity. Before the mining activity takes place, the agreement has to be stated before the work is being constructed on that particular land. And the landowners have agreed to that. That is why you will see uh, companies moving into landowners to uh, work on it, uh, land areas to work on it. My, to recommend, it is therefore important that landowners fully understand the nature of those different types of benefits and to fully maximize the opportunity. Landowners must be educated in order to, benef to use the benefits wisely. Education in the sense of managing, managing the fund that has been released and distribution of benefits among the landowners. Awareness must also be done between the people that they have to use the funds that have been given to the landowners. Mining is a non-renewable sector. Therefore, different benefit streams are very important for the landowners to understand in order to manage and invest in business ventures to sustain the livelihood after the mine closes. The act is sufficient. It, it mustn't be changed. Leave the act alone, educate the people to use the, to use the benefits wisely. Therefore, with a constructive opposition, strongly believe that the, minimum, that the mineral act should not be reviewed for the maximum benefits of landowners. Wow, we're finally finished now, and uh, pretty, pretty tough topic to debate, and it's really good. It shows what our theme is all about. So, Tim, what's our theme? What's the IBS debate competition theme for this year? Of course, developing leaders of our nation, and, and look at our future leaders debating a very, very uh, big topic, which is, of course, going to be um, uh, discussed in the 2011 uh, parliament session. So currently the uh, uh, parliament session is, is, is on at the time of this uh, program and it's good that uh, we are also uh, having this debate in our own parliament here about the, uh, the future benefits of all Papua New Guineans. But it's good to uh, hear our good leaders and uh, these young leaders are from the Port Mosby National High School. Please thank Peter Numoy, Beverly Kamuka, Koisen Sabuin and Dinoke Gonapa. They were the affirmative team. And from the opposition uh, team, from Kupiano Secondary, uh, that's uh, Kamate Rapila, Verli Vauna, Donna Raka, and Maranatha Kila. Thank you very much. Please you uh, thank your other opponents, and you can leave the stage.